That's the point.
you see that get blown out in the playoffs. But if you're not grabbing that one seed, which still means three big wins, you're going to need to win four games. I don't trust Mike McCarthy to win four consecutive games against good coaches. I don't trust Dak Prescott to put together four good performances in a row. With the Chiefs most likely win three of the game. Interesting. Oh, let me turn that off for a second. And I'll give you my thoughts here. Um, I'm working on these steps, pulling out all the staples and prepping this. Um, once I get all the staples out, I'll go get There was a lot of talk yesterday. There was a lot of conversation. There were interviews yesterday that had to do with the Dallas Cowboys. And that is Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones, owner and GM. You see what, what goes on here, right? You, you see this, right? There are 32 teams. 32 teams that are in training camp. 32. How many of them are being talked about back to back, to back, to back, to back, to back. You know, I'd like to hear, I've heard some rumors from my buddy Game Time Brian, um, saying that Jordan Davis hasn't been looking real good and that he is being put under the microscope. Um, I'd like to hear that dynamic. Um, I'd like to hear more about the dynamic of um, Jalen Hurts and their coach. That is a work in progress. I'd like to hear more about San Francisco and Brandon Ayuk, how that's going, the negotiation contracts. But they don't talk about anybody but Jerry Wayne Jones, Jerry Wayne Jones, Dak Prescott, Micah Parsons, and Mike McCarthy. Honestly, going to tell me that the Dallas Cowboys are the only team that are left wanting um, that have had their team not hit expectations. Um, I could say that Josh Allen, who's been considered to be one of the best, he ain't been to the Super Bowl. And as we say, Dak Prescott with two playoff wins. You know, Lamar Jackson only has two. Jalen Hurts, mind you. Jalen Hurts only has two. Now, granted, his best playoff game actually was in the Super Bowl, with the exception of the fumble. But when you think about his other two that were victories, I think the Giants only scored seven points. And I want to say that <clears throat> Brock Purdy got knocked out the first quarter. So I'm not going to turn around and say, those playoff wins by Jalen Hurts, man, 
Those were incredible playoff wins. And I believe that that team was considered loaded. The funny thing is, we always hear that the Cowboys have, you know, are, are one of the top talented teams. One of the top talented teams. <clears throat> Which is true. <coughs> They're definitely more talented than, say, the New York Giants and the Washington Commanders and things. The Carolina Panthers or the Atlanta Falcons or the New Orleans Saints. You know, they are definitely more talented than those guys. They are. That's a true statement. The Cowboys are one of the most talented teams. But see, you can't look and say they are the most talented team. Because I can look at it and say, when I look at San Francisco, okay, you can say that Nick Bosa and Micah Parsons are, are similar. I can say that. But then when you start going down the line of the other players that are out there, like Greenlaw, who, my God, I, I, I tell you what, sometimes I wonder why people watch me. Jason M., who's a 49er fan, will find the smallest detail and kill me for it. I think I said ACL for Greenlaw. My bad. Uh, when you do one takes and you're doing multiple things, like I do, I drove over 450 miles yesterday and didn't get to bed until like 1.30 this morning. And that was after driving 200 miles the day before and I've got 200 miles, 225 to go before I get back down for my live stream. And I'm down here on my hands and knees pulling out staples on a step. I, I might by accident say ACL as opposed to Achilles. You know, they both do start with A's. But as I start looking at having linebackers like Greenlaw and things like that, having defensive linemen like Armstead and Hargrave and things, and compare that talent, or look at Tony Pollard versus Christian McCaffrey, or look and see that I, you got like Brandon Ayuk and you got Debo Samuels and you got George Kittle, I can't look at that and say that the Cowboys have better talent than them. And in the end, a lot of winning is how much talent you have. I can, as much as it pains me to say so, is I can look at the Eagles and say that they have more talent than the Dallas Cowboys. By far, a better offensive line. <clears throat> right now, they're running backs <coughs> situation. Although, I don't think Saquon is as good as going to be the big boost that everybody's predicting. Um, because DeAndre Swift was not exactly chopped liver. He dude had 1,300 yards last year. And I honestly think that you're actually gonna take a step back. But then again, I am just the village idiot here who on a Sunday is stripping steps. But see, here's the thing. I, I, I can't tell you the, the names of the NASCAR drivers or anything like that. But let's say you have one of the top NASCAR drivers, you know? One of the best that's out there, right? Does he win solely because of how he drives? Now you gotta have a great driver. Got to have a great driver, first of all. The guy that can go through there, has no fear, passing and cutting and everything else, and pushing the car, you know, to the limits. You, you got to have that, right? But what happens if his engine blows? If the engine blows up while he's driving, is he going to win the race? Or do you look at that and say, you, you, you got, hey, bro, you got to win it without your engine. Or, or let's say his pit crew. Let's not, let's not go something as catastrophic as an engine failure. But let's say his pit crew, let's say his pit crew, he goes in there to get his tires changed and they forgot to put the tires out there. Or worse yet, there just happens to be a tire that just ends up being a bad tire and it blows. Or one of the pit crew 
doesn't get the tire tightened up on there. Do you look at that and say, you got to overcome that? No, you just lose. You lose because of circumstances around you. Now, I don't know of anyone, I don't know of anyone who can right now Seeing what the Dallas Cowboys are doing as far as their players go. Literally creating animosity, literally stirring shit up, making them feel like they are worthless, not worth the money that they deserve, and so on, and make them literally feel like they're not wanted to be here. That this is a championship Um, organization that is all about winning. That when you hear about players that are still, you believe are good players, that could help you, I don't honestly know. I can't honestly look and say that Derrick Henry being on the roster would have hurt the Cowboys. I can't honestly say that the Cowboys are better off that they didn't sign Derrick Henry. That's not to say that it's a guarantee in the whole world that Derrick Henry would make the Cowboys a Super Bowl contender. Because we've seen a lot of players that we thought had been great players go to places and not succeed. We've seen a lot of that. But you have to take chances at some point try and get better and I can't look at the Cowboys and say with the, with the talent that they have that they are competing like other teams are you think San Francisco if they don't see if they see a player right now as good as their talent is that they're not going to add it I believe they signed a linebacker or excuse me I'll give you a better example with Greenlaw, with the tour Achilles chasing, that they tried to get Eric Kendrick because they weren't sure if he was going to be ready to start season. They go out and say, let's go out and get Eric Kendrick. And for whatever reason, Eric Kendrick decided, I'd rather go with my old coach and the Dallas Cowboys and take less money. But they were looking to say, we've got a problem we need to fix. And let's go out there and make the best type of move. As much as we are now blaming Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys players and things in here, we actually have to look back and say that you've had some of the greatest people out there that couldn't compete and win it under Jerry Jones for Bill Parcells. You look at what Wade Phillips did with defenses when in creating Super Bowl caliber defenses. He couldn't do it here with the Cowboys. We look at uh, Jason Garrett. People kept saying how much Jason Garrett was handicapped by the Joneses. And people think I hate Tony Romo. I don't hate Tony Romo. Tony Romo was a really good quarterback that should have won a Super Bowl. But I'm not going to put that on Tony Romo. i got to put that on the Cowboys organization and the dysfunction that has been created by the Joneses. The circus atmosphere. The fact that we are all with on everybody's mind and talked about being them boys. Every team, every team at this moment, think about this, 
every team at this moment that has had a quarterback question, that has had a quarterback question, have answered it. They've gotten every quarterback out there has been taken care of, except for the Dallas Cowboys that literally had the runner-up MVP last year. Should have been the MVP. And mind you, the guy who won, he wasn't in the Super Bowl either. All right, good people. This is some tedious ass shit here. Mm. Eagle fans always find some bullshit work I gotta do. Have a good one, good people.